so hey everyone welcome back to the channel in this video we will be solving the problem find first and last occurrence of x so let's read the problem statement out so we are given a sorted array arr containing n elements we have to find the index of the element which is let's say duplicate and we have to find the first and last occurrence of that element for example if you observe here n is going to be 9 and x is 5 so we are having an array of length 9 now here if you observe 5 is repeating and we have to find the first occurrence of 5 as well as the last occurrence of it so if you observe 5 occurs at the index 2 so its first occurrence is going to be 2 and its last occurrence is going to be index 5 so we need to give our output as 2 comma 5 now if you observe the expected time complexity for this is going to be order of log n and the expected space complexity is going to be order of 1. So let's discuss the problem in more detail. So let's say my array is like this 1, 5, 5, 5, 6 and 7. We are given that the array is sorted. Now the brute force approach can be you can apply linear search from left and as soon as you hit an element which is equal to x you can store that. Okay and break out of the loop similarly you can do a linear search from back as soon as you hit an element from the back which is equal to x we can break and in that way we can get our answer okay so let's say this is index 0 1 2 3 4 5 so when the element at index 1 is going to be 5 we can store that in our let's say one variable first and it's going to be i and we can break out of the loop and you can use a for loop to iterate Similarly, for, from the last, you can iterate and you can store that in a variable, let's say last, and you can break out of that loop. And if we are not able to find the elements, we have to return minus 1. So you can initialize first and last to be minus 1. Now, this approach is going to take you order of end time in worst case, because in the worst case, let's say if the element is not present, you will be iterating over each of the elements and that will take order of end time but we know the array is sorted we can optimize that so how can we optimize it so we can optimize it using binary search okay and how can we apply binary search to it let's say my array is one five five six seven so let's say my array is like this okay now we need to find the first index okay so let's write the indexes as well now First of all what happens if you will calculate the mid so start is pointing to 0 and it end will be pointing to 5. So first of all you will calculate the mid so mid will be nothing but 0 plus 5 by 2 which is start plus end by 2. Okay? That is going to be 5 by 2 and we will take the integer part so we get 2. So we hit the index whose value is going to be equal to our x. Okay? Now, this can be probably one of my answers. Okay. Agar let's say yahan pe hume 5 mil gaya. Let's say agar left mein 5 na ho. So this is going to be our answer, right? So we can store that in our answer. Okay. We can store answer equal to mid. And now since we have to find the first occurrence here, so we will probably try to find the lesser index element. Okay. So what we will do? Mid was here, start was here, end was here, right? So we will move our end to mid minus 1. So as soon as you hit an index which is equal to your x, you can store that in the answer. Okay. And you can point into mid minus 1. Why we are pointing into mid minus 1? Because we know next time we calculate the mid, it is going to lie in the left side. Right? So now if you calculate the mid, mid is going to be this. Okay. Now 1 is smaller than 5. So when my element present at the mid is smaller than x, we move our start. So start will be pointing to mid plus 1 because I know my element is on the right. So I need to shift my start and else what happens? Let's say now our start will be pointing to mid plus 1. So start will be pointing to 1 and end will be pointing to 1. Now if you take the mid of it, it is going to be 1. 
now if you compare the elements right it is going to be equal to x we can store that in our answer and in this case we will update our answer to mid and end will be nothing but mid minus 1 so next time end will be at position 0 and start will be at position 1 when start crosses the end we break out of the loop and we can return answer from there so the else case will be nothing but mid minus 1 okay and in the end we can return our answer and you know since we are using binary search here that is going to take a log of n time okay and we have only used a answer variable so that is going to be taking a constant space so this was for the first occurrence right now how can we find the last occurrence we will do a similar thing let's say my array is like this start is going to be 0 end is going to be 5 first of all you calculate the mid mid will be pointing at this okay now when we compare the element present at the mid that is going to be equal to our x so let's say our x was 5 this is going to be my one of the answers because it can happen that in the right side of it 5 is not present right so in that case we again store that in our answer and now since we have to find that in the right part we move our start to mid plus one okay so start will move to mid plus one now my start for in the next iteration is going to point at three and end as end is at five now we again calculate the mid mid is going to be three plus five by two which is going to be four now we compare the element so my array of mid is greater than my x so x was 5 and array of mid is going to be 6 so in that case we move our end to mid minus 1 so when this happens you move our end to mid minus 1 else we move our start to mid plus 1 okay next time what happens end is at this and you calculate the mid 3 plus 3 by 2 is going to be 3 you again compare that is equal to my x we store that in our answer and we update our s to mid plus 1 so next time s will be pointing to fourth index and end will be pointing to third index so as soon as we hit a point where start is going to be greater than end we can stop so this was about the last occurrence this is also going to take a order of log of n time because we are using binary search here and it will be taking order of one space so overall if you observe for the first occurrence we take a order of log n time for the last occurrence we take a order of log n time so finally we can say our time complexity is nothing but order of log of n right and our space complexity is going to be order of one right so i hope you have understood the problem let's see the implementation so first of all what i have done i have taken an answer vector because we need to return the first and the last index okay now for the first index we will be calling search first and we will be passing array start will be pointing at 0th index and will be pointing at n minus 1th index and we will pass the key to be found now what this function is doing we know if we are not able to find the element we can return minus one so we have initialized our answer to minus one while my start is less than equal to end we can do our operations right so we will calculate the mid now this is the optimized way to calculate the mid see what happens start plus end minus s by 2 is equal to 2 into start plus end minus s which is going to be start plus end by 2 only right but by doing this we just take the difference here right and let's say if my s is very large and end is also very large it might happen that their sum will overflow from the integer range okay so that's why we have used this formula okay now if my array of mid is going to be equal to x we can store that because that is going to be probably one of my answers and we will move our end to mid minus one in the case we want to find for the first index else if my array of mid is going to be lesser than x means we have to move in the right part so start will point to mid mid plus one and end will move to mid minus one in case array of mid is greater than x right and in the end we can return our answer 
similarly in the search last function what we are doing we are calculating the mid first if my array of mid is going to be equal to x that is going to be one of our answers so we store that we move our start to mid plus one because we now need to find in the right part otherwise what we do if that is smaller than x we know we have to search in the right part so we move our start to mid plus one and we, in the else part we move our end to mid minus one and in the end we can return our answer so when we have got this two we can store that in our answer vector and we can return our answer so i hope you have understood the problem if you want to learn linear search and binary search how we can do linear search and binary search i have taught that we can also do that using recursion you can watch my video on linear search and binary search using recursion i will provide the link to that in the description and if you have liked this video like this comment your doubts if you have any subscribe to my channel and share among your friends thanks for watching guys